Today, let's talk about the best weapon in each category. So in this video, I'll be telling you which weapon is the best in each category and give you the stats to back it up. But I won't be going in as much detail as my stat guides, so if you want to know more or you have any questions, check those out on my channel. There are two weapons on this list that I haven't covered yet, so I won't show you the stats, but I will still tell you about them. So let's begin with the best long range assault rifle. I've said it before, but the EM2 is still the best long range assault rifle. Its TTK is basically the best out of all the assault rifles, and thanks to its recoil, it can still stretch out pretty far. Its mobility is just as good as any other Cold War assault rifle, so it is one of the most balanced weapons in the game. Its recoil does take some getting used to, but once you do, you will be pretty much unstoppable against most other assault rifles. However, I know that this weapon may be a little too difficult for many people to use. So I'm going to give two alternatives, the Fara and the C-58. These two weapons perform very similarly. The Fara has a faster fire rate, but less damage and a worse ADS time. And the C-58 does a lot more damage, but has a much slower fire rate. So if you're not confident enough to use the EM-2, but you still want to do good at longer range, either of these weapons will do pretty good. And now for the best sniper support assault rifle. This goes to the Cold War AK-47. Before the patch, the FAR was actually the best, the only bad thing about it was being its reload time. But now, it's the AK-47's time to shine. Its rate of fire may not be the best for a closer range weapon, but when you do manage to hit all your shots, you get a pretty good TTK. It's got pretty reasonable recoil and great mobility because it's a Cold War weapon. I think this is the only assault rifle that you can actually use as a more mobile sniper support weapon right now. Anything else basically doesn't have the TTK and mobility. Next is the best close range assault rifle. And to no surprise, it is the AS Val. Its TTK in the first damage range is unrivaled, and its mobility is still pretty good, even compared to Cold War weapons. And while its recoil may not be the best, you definitely shouldn't be using this past 30 meters anyways. The AS Val is a monster, and it can easily outgun most SMGs. However, it just doesn't have the mobility that they do. So let's move on to the best SMGs starting with the best sniper support SMG. This goes to the PPSH-41. I know I've said the PPSH was the best sniper support weapon for a really long time, but now there's no argument against it. Its CTKs in the first and third damage range are extremely great. It manages to share the same top mobility stats as a few other SMGs, and its recoil is easy enough to stretch out to almost 50 meters. After the buff it got that made its recoil a lot more manageable, you are now able to swap out some of the other attachments to make you even faster, allowing you to be more aggressive than before. So whether you're pairing it with a sniper rifle or a long range assault rifle, you can't go wrong. Now for the best, aggressive close range SMG. And it is still the OTS-9. While other SMGs like the Modern Warfare MP5 can now get a better upper torso TTK, the OTS will feel a lot more consistent because the upper torso and lower torso TTKs are the same and they are only a tiny bit slower than the Modern Warfare MP5's upper torso TTK. Plus, if you get one headshot in the mix, you now will be beating the MP5 no matter what. And the OTS has much better mobility, allowing aggressive players to push and move around a lot better. Its recoil may not really be that great, but you shouldn't be intending to use this past its first damage range anyways. Now for the best shotgun in the game. This is the Gallo 12. While it may not be full auto or have the fastest TTK, it certainly has the best range for its 3 shot kill. And you can easily get that while hip firing. It's got great mobility and pretty decent reload times. While something like the Jack 12 gets a better TTK, its mobility is much worse and its actual range where it can get that TTK is extremely short. So that's why the Gallo is currently the best shotgun, although shotguns really aren't too great in Warzone right now anyways. Now for the best long range LMG. The Stoner 63. It has excellent TTKs in both the first and second damage range. Its mobility is an LMG, so it's nothing special, but its recoil is really great. With it, you can easily stretch out further than the EM-2. So if you want that slower fire rate, high damage weapon, the Stoner may be the weapon for you. And then the best all-purpose LMG is the MJ-82. Its mobility isn't special, it's just an LMG. But its TTK is among the best, both long range and close range. And the best thing is that it's realistic as well, because you'll be able to get those upper torso and lower torso shots easily. And to make it even better, its recoil is literally straight vertical. So while you won't be able to stretch it out as far as a long range assault rifle, at 100 meters, you'll be instantly deleting people. And now the best tactical rifle. This goes to the M16. 
Tactical rifles right now aren't the best to use in Warzone. The M16's mobility isn't really that great, and its recoil, while it is pretty decent, isn't something special either. But at least, when you get one headshot in, you can get a pretty average or above average TTK. But even then, securing that two burst kill isn't the easiest thing to do, especially since that third shot does like to move a little bit to the left or right. Now for sniper and marksman rifles, starting with the best long range rifle. This easily goes to the ZRG 20mm. While it still has pretty bad mobility, it is much better than the HDR, which is its main competitor. And its recoil is great because it recenters by itself after every single shot. And for its damage, unlike the HDR, it can actually get a two-shot kill in the upper torso, in both damage ranges. And in the first damage range, you can even get a two-shot kill while hitting lower torso shots. The ZRG really is the best. The only thing the HDR still has over the ZRG is the variable zoom scope. Now for the best aggressive rifle. This easily goes to the Swiss K31. While it may have a slightly slower ADS time than the Car 98, all its other stats are much better. Its mobility is great, it automatically recenters after every shot, and if for some reason you don't get your one shot headshot, if you hit an upper torso shot, no matter where you shoot, you are guaranteed now a two shot kill. There's really no reason to pick anything over the Swiss K31. Unless, of course, you are a pro quickscoper and you need that ADS time in the Car 98. Now for the best pistol the Amp 63. Its mobility is extremely great, and almost as good as the more mobile SMGs. And its recoil is surprisingly good for a full auto pistol. And while its TTK may be a few milliseconds slower than Saikov's, its lower torso TTK is much better. So when you're actually using it and mixing shots, realistically, you're probably going to be getting a better TTK. So unless you need that 80 round mag and you're confident you can hit all your upper torso shots and only upper torso shots, use the Amp. And lastly, the best launcher in the game, the Strela. Its mobility isn't that great since it's a launcher, and its reload times should definitely be a little bit faster. But what it can do is take out vehicles without warning. It has the fastest projectile velocity out of all the launchers, and since you can't lock on, the enemy won't get alerted. You can take out pretty much anything except the cargo truck with one hit. So if you really learn to use Estrella, you'll be a nightmare to vehicles, and you can actually be a pretty decent sniper. So those are currently the best weapons in Warzone. However, these are the best because of their numbers, not necessarily because of the way they feel. So be sure to let me know if you agree or disagree. And if there's any weapon, build, or part of the game you want to break down, let me know and you may see it on the next Community Wednesday. But that's the video. If you enjoyed or it's helped you in any way, let me know by leaving a like. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. And if you want to make sure that you never miss another video, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.